Pushers, today I am back with a webtoon rant. I know it's been a while since I uploaded, but it is what it is. Things happen in real life, and now I'm back. So we'll be returning with The Great Maid Returns After 4,000 Years, which is an epic, epic webtoon that I really, really like, and I'm going to explain right now. So in this world, there are these things called demigods, and these are essentially omnipotent, well, seemingly omnipotent, divine, super powerful beings, and essentially they kind of see humans as ants and inferior beings, and they're kind of like the bad guys of the series. And fighting against them in the Age of Light was the Ancient Age, how what the Ancient Age was called. There were these bunch of super powerful individuals that were like the top part of humanity. The Great Seishnizer, the Great Mage, Lucas Truman, a bunch of other people. And here we're talking about Lucas Truman, the Great Mage. He fought the demigod lord, who is the most powerful of all of the demigods and the leader of them. And essentially what happened was Lord put him into lore, into the abyss where he was trapped for 4,000 years. Then, due to a boy named Frey having a very desperate wish to become better, he reincarnates into Frey's body. Well, Frey, like, takes his own life, but the Great Mage reincarnates into him. And there it starts as his new life as Frey Blake, or as, well, Lucas Truman becoming Frey Blake, and he becomes this new guy, and he's back in this world. And he finds out that, you know, humanity is weakened a lot. They're like super, super weak. They're way less powerful than they were before. And the demigods are still prevalent threat. So it's about him going against the demigods. That's the entire premise of the story. And the premise itself is really interesting, and it get, only gets more interesting with the introduction of apostles, which is a concept where essentially demigods have these chosen person that they invest their power in, and if you can take down an apostle, the demigod goes into a deep slumber, by which, you know, they can be easily killed. So they do have a weakness, and they have a rule that they can't just murder the entirety of humanity due to this this invisible force, which the demigods call the god, which is kind of cool. And this is a very interesting premise, and I think what really makes it good is that the goals are super well set, the premise is really good, it's already, with the reincarnation stuff, it's quite intriguing, but we got that additional layer of these, we're fighting the, the gods, essentially, of this world, and we need to, like, fight them and stuff, and it's really, really cool. And a lot of, um, a lot of really big emotions come from that premise. And... One really good scene, I'm gonna show two scenes. One is a fight scene and one is this scene. And the scene that I'm about to show you guys is when Lucas Truman reveals to um, to the leader of the Lucas, Lucas Tr the Truman Circle that he is Lucas Truman. And now what is the Truman Circle? Essentially, after the Age of Light and the heroes kind of died off, or missing or whatever, like Lucas Truman, for example, he was trapped in the abyss. Essentially, people made these things called circles or groups to defend or attack defend humanity and take down the demigods slowly but surely and as defenders of humanity they named themselves after the heroes from the age of light and the truman ring is obviously the ring that was named after lucas truman and this is the part where he reveals that um he is lucas truman and recently schneiser has come back to life schneiser being the great sage has come back to life in a golem form and essentially this is the part where he reveals it obviously spoilers but you know it's a really emotional scene and i got i got chills from it so i'm gonna read this one and i'm also gonna read the other one which is just an epic ass fight scene which is kind of the norm that you should expect from this what tune let's go my, o my old friend woke up from a long slumber. Huh? He was someone who was much more impressive than me. He is righteous, steadfast, wise. I've always respected his conviction. Ha! Huh. That's how I feel when I watch you, Frey. I really want to meet him, that friend. You'll meet him soon. But he really had no luck when he came to, came back, came to find, finding a student. To the point that it was weird. It was such a strange thing. He was much more knowledgeable than I was. And was even great at teaching. When he woke up, I told him about the circles. It interested him a lot. Of course it would. There were humans 4,000 years into the future. Who took on our will after all that time. And who were fighting with the demigods. How could there be anything more satisfying and happy than that? Huh? Obviously, the thing he was most curious about was the straw necklaces, but I couldn't tell him. F Frey? If he knew about the current rotten state of the straw necklaces, he would surely have been disappointed. Hey Frey, what are you saying right now? 
His name is Schweizer Strau. Frey, are you perhaps... He really, really has no luck when it comes to students. When I first stepped into the Truman Rings territory, do you know what I thought? I really am quite blessed. Even though a whole 4,000 years has passed, my will had been followed so closely. No, it had been succeeded even more clearly. Honestly, I was proud that you were the ones who succeeded in my name. From the moment I met you, I wanted to tell you this. Thank you, Benny Yang Argento. I, I just, the crumbling circle. I know, I know how hard you've had to endure. You've worked hard. I really am so proud of you. And that's one of my favorite scenes. And it's just so emotive. This, this like, you know, imagine you're Lucas Truman or even him, even her being validated by her idol while, you know, imagine, you know, you are desperately fighting. Humans are desperately fighting against these divine, omnipotent, ultra power beings. And even after 4,000 years, when, you know, humanity could have easily given up in that 4,000 years, there are still people in your name, named after your name, fighting against the same people, the same divine beings that you fought against. And it's just really epic, and it always gives me chills when I see this scene. Another lovely scene is a part where Frey defeats one of the demigods. And he's fighting them, and it's a pretty epic scene, so I'm just gonna read it. You blocked my arrow! That dark red mana, it's absolute magic. It's the first time I'm seeing it with my own eyes. So what he said about reaching the realm of tearing even space apart wasn't a lie. He's really facing off against a demigod alone on equal footing. I applaud you. Amongst the humans I've fought against in the past 1,000 years, you're the one of the annoying types. An innumerable amount of arrows. You're just a mortal who can't even live for a hundred years. Did you really think you could defeat me? I have trained this power for thousands of years. Our levels of experience cannot be compared. <laughs> thousands of years, my ass. None of you demigods are that determined. What? If all of you had really resolved yourself and trained for thousands of years, this world would have been in your hands a long time ago. You demigods are in existence that by chance happen to have divine power, the strongest power. A kind so self-absorbed they never once even thought of developing that power and stopped growing entirely. That's the truth about demigods. If you bastard had the dignity which normally comes with your age, I wouldn't even have a chance. Well, if you think about it, if that were the case, we probably wouldn't even have a reason to be fighting like this in the first place. This fucking arrogant human. Let's see if you can keep running your mouth after this. This doesn't make any sense. How to a human? Because I really did train for thousands of years. Yeah, and obviously, like, you know, you can see the particle effects and the lighting and shit. It looks really, really good. The action stuff looks really, really good. And just this pure epicness that just comes from this amazing character. And I, I really do like it. I know, I know, like, you know, it's a flat character, you know, overpowered MC, type of overpowered MC, but it doesn't change the fact that this gives me chills. Like, it's it's such a great action scene. And, and the fact that there's this clear objective, clear enemy, clear threat, you know what's at stake, creates for a, even though you can call it stereotypical or very typical, you know, story, it is still a good story and it's very well built up. And that's why I really, really love this. And it's a tier B because, you know, it's really emotive, it has great character design, it has great fight scenes, but it is missing maybe a little bit of depth and a little bit of philosophy. 
but you know it's still a B tier, maybe even an A tier if the finale obviously matches it. But you know, for now it's a B tier. It might be might be an update video maybe in a year or two when this is this thing is done. But it's a B tier, and I would highly recommend it if you just want a fun read, fun fantasy read. If you like OPMCs or or fighting against you know divine omnipotent beings, cough cough like attack and Dynan, then you'll you'll like this one. And yeah, it's 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 got everything. Have a great day, everyone. This was Wolfram Rant. Goodbye.